Hello, everyone. Comments, 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 comments. Again, my name is Melissa Wokel, and I want to really introduce this lovely lady, Lita, right? And um, she has been um, a part of my um, community for a, almost two years now, and I'm just excited to be able to bring her on and let her share her, her journey as a six-figure freight agent and how she was able to build her book of business, not necessarily based on what she was um, comfortable doing, um, but based on what, you know, heaven brought her, right? Um, and so she's going to share a lot tonight about over dimensional. And again, when we're talking about moving over dimensional, I want to be very, very clear as we're going through this process that we're not discussing tonight, you know, equipment types or anything like that. We're showing you the journey. Um, and again, if you are here, please comment in the bottom where you're from, how you, um, how you got to know us, and, um, and definitely what part of the journey are you a carrier, broker, shipper, um, where are you at in your journey. But again, we're not talking about super loads or anything like that, but we want to share with you the process in which we started out, right, Lita? Started yeah. out with no experience and how as ladies and ladies in the industry, because I have to tell you that this is a very male dominated niche, right? And so how do we go from not knowing um, to getting into one of one of the most lucrative niches in the industry? Um, and so I'm excited to allow you to speak and talk about your journey. And um, can you just share us a little bit about how you became a freight broker? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Lida. Uh, as you might already know, I am a former truck driver. And uh, after I quit driving, I started to dispatch uh, my carrier company's trucks. And I was doing reefer and driving. But uh, when I decided to become a freight broker, I tried to move driving and reefer loads, but I found it very boring and uh, because I always liked geometry and I always liked the uh, machinery and cool stuff. I thought that flatbed is uh, things that I want to do and um, it became my passion and I am very um, excited every time I move uh, loads with flatbeds, step decks, RGNs and uh, all these open deck trailers. So, uh, yeah, that's how I became a freight broker agent. Absolutely. So what tips could you give someone in, that's starting out? So you started out with just doing reefer and dry van. That's a big, that's a big change into doing over dimensional and, and, yeah. and knowing how the sizes go on the trailers, et cetera. Um, what tips would you give someone who maybe – does it understand maybe reefer and van that wants to get into this niche? Yes, I was actually uh, doing a reefer. My first customer, I remember it was a reefer, but I was never able to move his lots uh, because they were going like Quincy and Bronx, New York, and no one wants to go there. And then I said, you know what, I am, uh, because I have been a reefer driver and uh, I really was tired of this reefer headache. So mm -hmm. I decided just go ahead and do um, uh, open deck and flatbed a lot. As the way I got uh, my first customer, um, I am based out of South Carolina and uh, I started to post in LinkedIn. And actually, my first and the best customer, he reached out to me and I didn't pitch him or anything like that. He reached out to me and he said, do you have trucks in South Carolina? And to be quite honest with you, I didn't even know that he's not using driving. So I said, yeah, I do have trucks in South Carolina. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he gave me a lot, the uh, first lot, and uh, it was a hot shot lot. Uh, and I moved it very, you know, successfully. And he started to give me more next day and next day. And that's how it started. And then he introduced me to his other shipping managers because they have different locations in all around the United States. And every time they get a new shipping manager, he always invites me. And then I always go and visit them in person. And sometimes when they get new shipping managers, I know more stuff about their equipment that they know. I remember, Melissa, you were telling me this long ago that sometimes you know more about 
these equipment and the shipping manager who just got hired, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, I want to introduce a Jamira as well. Jamira was on our last panel talking about drayage and containers, and we call her the container chick. Um, she's from Georgia and she's with um, JLUL Logistics. And so if you haven't um, been introduced to her, she's a fantastic girl. And she also does overweight, right? With containers. Is that right, Jamira? Yes. Hi, Lydia. How are you? Hi, Thanks for having me. Yes, we do do overweight um, with containers as well. Awesome. Awesome. And so again, that's another question for you. Would you give any tips to anyone who maybe is doing overweight shipments? What are the things that they would look for or what they would need to know if they were doing an oversized container or van? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're moving any type of overweight um, dredge, you need to make sure that you have the um, proper permit to move overweight. You also need to pay attention to your scale ticket when coming out of the port for the gross weight and the net weight, um, just to make sure you're in legal regulations with a 20 foot or a 40 foot container. Because if you go through the scale and you're overweight without a permit, that's a big fine. Yeah, and they can't go over 80,000, is that right? Correct, it can't go over 80,000. If you do go over 80,000, just make sure you have the proper permits in place. Absolutely. In some states, and, and as a freight broker, we don't take care of that, right? We don't take care of any kind of permitting. Um, I'm sure that Jamira has carriers that have annual permits for the state of Georgia because she does a lot of Savannah work. And so at the very beginning of every year, they'll that's part of their process, just like when they do their IFTA or they do their TAGs. They're now going to just take that one other step. I, it's what is it, three to five hundred dollars? It's not real expensive for a year. So, what I tell carriers is to add the overweight permit when you're getting ready to renew your insurance. So, when you get ready to renew your insurance, that's when your overweight permit expires. It goes all the way for that whole year until your insurance renew. If you get it before your insurance renew, then it's going to expire quickly. Some of my carriers get seven-day permits, which you can. You can get a seven-day permit um, as well. You can get a one-day permit, but it costs more. If you get it when your insurance is about to expire, it's normally between $300, $350 for the state of Georgia. Perfect, perfect. So I'm going to talk a little bit. Um, and so Yamani, I think I'm pronouncing his name right, Yamani Chavez says, so with permits, how far over 80,000 pounds can one be hauled? Well, it dep depends on the tractor and trailer. And again, I always recommend that you know your carrier and you know your carrier base, because as freight brokers, we don't own that equipment. We don't, you know, we don't manage it. We don't do inventory on the equipment. Is that right? Is that what you recommend, ladies, as well? Yes, uh, that's what I would recommend because uh, bobtail and trailer, it can be, let's say, a uh, freed liner, let's say, or um, uh, freed liner and uh, RGN trailer, right? But the two freed liners and two RGN trailers, they can weigh different. So we are looking for overall weight and uh, it, it is always the best to check with the carrier. Uh, because they are the ones who know their uh, gross weight. And also make sure it's a um, chassis as well. Triaxle um, as well, chassis, you need to verify that. And if you're going to haul overweight, you need to make sure those chassis tires are in good condition. Because if not, as soon as you get out the port and you get a flat, that tire responsibility is on you. Now, what I would educate individuals on, if you get a flat on a chassis tire, keep the tire, keep the receipt, and take it to the port. They will reimburse you for that tire, that chassis tire. Now, I can't guarantee you 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, but I will tell you to do a follow-up, but I know they will reimburse you for any flats that you have on a chassis um, out of the port. Wonderful, wonderful. That was a really good question. 
Um, and so Angela asked the question, how can I share this discussion with another person? I'd love for others to hear this knowledge. Um, definitely. Let's just go ahead and just take a few minutes to drop. Um, does anybody have the, oh, I don't know if I have the um, code to drop that for anyone. Just let me see what I can come up here with. But the next question, I guess it would be, um, is there any kind of technology or anything that you use? Um, how do you find carriers, Lita, to be able to source some of this freight that you have? Uh, well, I already built a relationship with uh, carriers, but uh, in the beginning, I would just uh, start with a load board and uh, I will code properly. I will put a good uh, code and uh, they would start uh, calling me. That's how I started to build these relationships. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I noticed that um, you learn a lot from the carriers because they are the ones who know their equipment. They are the ones who know how much they can wait uh, and the size. So you have to always talk to the carriers to properly code. And um, that's how I caught it my first oversized shipment. I have a, a friend who is always doing oversized shipments and he has more than 20 years of experience. And in the beginning, every time I had question, I would just call him and I would say, hey, uh, uncle, I call him Uncle Basha. I call him all the time. How, what equipment do I need? And, um, and he would uh, always provide all the details because, of course, he has uh, 20 years of experience and he knows. There's the key. Yeah. There's the key is, is as ladies in the industry. And I think before Jamira came into the room, I said I was very intentional bringing in, you know, people on the panel that have been in the industry, maybe have had background in the industry for, you know, 5, 10, 15 years in some capacity like you did, Jamira, with the military and Lita as a carrier asset side. Um, but to be in a broker for less than five years, that's a very intentional because I want to show everyone that the most important part of being a freight broker is relationships, right? And just like the relationships with the drivers, that's where you learn a lot. If you can build those relationships, absolutely with, with the drivers. One of the questions that was out here is, please advise drivers about running flats. How does if a driver is running a flatbed, how can he get into overdimensional or what are the things that he could do to, to be able to run some overdimensional? Do you guys have any ideas? Uh, well, um, one of my customers, they are not always moving overdimensional. Sometimes they will have hot shot loads. Sometimes they will have full flatbed, but once in a while they have overdimensional over loads. So that's how you, uh, you get into this uh, type of relationships because yes, maybe there are some companies like big machinery companies, they all only do overdimensional, but there are companies like even steel companies or transformer companies. They sometimes uh, just move regular, um, regular shipments and they are not overdimensional, but uh, once in a while they will have it. But um, if you are a flatbed, of course, uh, you have to change your equipment, right? To do uh, over-dimensional because you cannot do it with flatbed. Okay, so another question was, and this one's for you, Jamira. It says, I meant run flats on chassis tires. Uh, Can you explain kind of what that means? I, I don't quite understand the question. So I'm going to take um, this question as if a chassis receive a flat. So if a mm. chassis receive a flat, you call um, whoever um, roadside assistance to get that chassis tire fixed. Instead of giving that chassis tire to the mechanic, you keep it and put it in your truck. And you take that flat to the port and turn it in with the receipt. Um, and the port will reimburse you. Um, I can only speak for Savannah Port. I know they does it. I'm not sure how long it takes for reimbursement. But I know you take it to the maintenance shop and they will reimburse you as long as you have the tire and the receipt. Awesome. Awesome. And here's another question that came up is um, obviously, where do you start to get into drayage? Heather, there was a great, great panel on Monday. If you go out on my YouTube channel, it is there as it just got posted this morning. It was about an hour and 15 minutes of three fantastic ladies, including Jamira talking about drayage 
Um, and But she also asked a question about heavy haul or how to discover her niche. I know that that really has been something, Jameer, you knew from the beginning what your niche wanted to be. And I think I'm not for sure about you, Lita. What made you decide, you know, because that's what you do now, right, is oversize and heavy hauls. So what made you decide to go into each one of your niches and how did you decide that? Yes, that is a great question, and uh, I would love to answer to this one. Um, because everyone, uh, when I was just starting out, of course, everyone says, hey, go find your niche, uh, because you have to focus on one niche, riches in niches, and you cannot be everyone to everyone, right? So you have to serve one a niche of customers. But uh, in the beginning, because I was like doing reefer, driving, uh, I was thinking that is my niche, but uh, then I realized that, I am getting bored and it is not interesting for me. So you just need to find something that you know about and you like You like to learn more and uh, you, you have to plan it, that you have to deal with it all day uh, if you are planning to be on this uh, on a long term. So you have to do something that you really like because logistics, as we all know, it can be stressful and uh, you have to love it uh, to continue moving, right? So just find something that you like and uh, find something that you like to learn more about. That would be my advice. Awesome. All right. Perfect. Perfect. There's another question that came up is um, peace and love ladies. I have my license to escort over dimensional freight, but can't find any work. Is it like a load board or something? Um, I would say no. I do have a girlfriend that used to, She used to be my employee for many years and she with her husband does escorting. Um, And I know one of the ways that they find clients is by um, talking to the big heavy haul carriers. I mean, especially when, and of course they have their people, but that would be something you'd probably want to do face to face, you know, stop by somebody that does heavy haul, for example, diamond out of Wisconsin. There's, that's a big, big one. Um, that does, that's their primary. I think that they have over a hundred trucks and they, that's all they do is RGN step deck over dimensional. Um, of course, it's just like any kind of business, you know, you're going to have to go through the process, get out on LinkedIn, show, you know, what you're capable of doing and, and, um, and go from there. Do you have any suggestions on how to build an escort business? Like anything else? I think that there is some technique behind finding customers. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to add something on this because I had this big project in Los Angeles and I actually needed to find escort, uh, but uh, it was very hard uh, to find it. So, so what I did, I, I just went to Google and I start, started to search escort at Los Angeles. So I would suggest you have a website and uh, you make sure that when people search, uh, they will find you in the couple of searches, in the couple of yeah. first searches. SEO, yeah. you know, go on YouTube, find out how to, how to, yes. you know, Google business. There's a lot of places that you can, you know, you can advertise your business. Another question that's for Jamira, um, aside from maintenance issues like blown tires, are there any mishaps that are covered by ports other than tire fixes? No, there's no, there's no other mishaps besides um, tire fixes. Um, that's really <laughs> that's really it. Once you get that container and you take it out of the port, is everything is on you at that moment. Awesome, awesome. What do you think is the key success when brokering overdimensional shipments? What made you get become successful at it? I mean, was there anything that caused you not to be successful? Um, I know a story that uh, I would love to tell you about how I lost $7,000 and was sitting at a Tennessee <laughs> scale because my shipment was overweight and they didn't have enough axles and I hired somebody who was inexperienced and it was just a mess. That was my, and I could have gotten out of the game after that, right? I could have said no more, but I didn't. So do you have any stories like that where you said, you know what, I made up, messed up, and how did you get over that? 
Yes, I have this story that is still going on. So maybe uh, people who follow me in LinkedIn, I, I was proud of myself. I, I did this overdimensional shipment and my driver hit the bridge next day <laughs> and he broke all this equipment that we were moving and uh, we are still dealing with this, with this uh, incident that happened. But uh, it was not my driver's fault because I provided the right dimensions. It was the shipper's fault who provided wrong dimension to my customer and my customer gave this wrong dimension to me and I gave this wrong dimension to the driver and uh, the bridge was 10.4, 10, 10 but this uh, equipment was uh, higher than that and uh, he, he broke this equipment. Yeah, and we are still dealing with this claim. Ah. But, uh, yeah, but I didn't oh. give up. <laughs> we had a we had a similar situation, you know, in, in, in our brokerage where we had a Conestoga, um, a Conestoga trailer. It wasn't overdimensional, but the driver's um, drive shaft um, right. broke and he flipped the trailer and, and, and it flipped the machine. And um, that was in June of last year. And, you know, God forbid. <laughs> yes. Claims are not fun at all. Claims are not fun. Um, and so there's nice. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what is your best best price of advice for a new broker? If uh, that's what I was actually going to say, that make sure you have the correct dimensions. Uh, in this case, of course, I couldn't have the correct dimensions. I'm just giving the dimensions that I have been provided. But there are a lot of cases that you have to call and make sure that uh, you have the correct dimensions. So that's what my, my advice would be, the biggest advice, to have the correct exactly. dimension. Exactly, and also to know the value of the product because, again, um, asking your shipper, you know, the value of that product is super important because if the value is – and just let me tell you a little bit about freight brokerage and contingent cargo. Contingent cargo is something that is not necessarily has to – you have to have it. I know, Lita, you're an agency. You really don't have to handle that. Um, but your, your agency may only have 250000 in cargo. If that machine or that product is over 250000 it is the carrier's responsibility to get that insurance and to have that insurance policy for that overage. And if it's three hundred, you wouldn't have two fifty on yours and then an extra fifty. No, he has to get the insurance for the whole 300000 and there are shippers interest policies out there that can do that, right? Um, and so when your shipper says to you, hey, the product's worth, you know, 150000 and it's actually worth three hundred, dollars um, just make sure you CYA, cover your butt, right? Make sure you have everything in writing with your shipper, because the last thing you want to do is have something, you know, God forbid, go wrong. And these are not inexpensive. Expensive. When you're dealing with heavy haul, you're dealing with heavy shipments. It's not cheap. I mean, this is this is a process in which you have to take your time, cross your cross your T's. Is that right? Cross your T's and dye your eyes. It's been a long day. Cross your T's and dye your eyes. Right? Absolutely. So there's another question that we have here. Um, what is the process of doing heavy haul out of the port? I got in here late, not sure if you discussed this already. I'm going to speak from a, um, from a break bulk um, angle, okay? That means that the product comes off the steam line, right? And it's already, um, it's in a warehouse or it's already on the ground, okay? Um, I used to haul out machinery, CNC machinery. Um, and I say used to because it went with my former agency that I used to be with um, out of the port of LA and the port of Norfolk. And we used to haul CNC machinery that would be, you know, 120 inches wide, 135 inches wide, 100. And I've never done anything above 152 inches in height. I've never done anything larger than that. So I don't talk, never done really super loads um, when it comes to that. But um, when the process of doing heavy haul is you're going to want to go and look on LinkedIn, find machinery, construction material, um, as excavators and find those suppliers and then do your research from there and then find out where they ship their product from. And sometimes on their website, it does that. Um, what about you, Jamira? Is there a process of doing overweight shipments at the port? 
No, there's really no process besides making sure you have your overweight permits. Um, and, you know, you have the right axle, the right um, chassis. But that's really it. And knowing your truck, you have to know your truck, whether you have a Freightliner or Peterbilt or International, because your truck might pull that weight very funny. Um, you might be used to going 80, but with that overweight shipment, your truck might go 65, 70. So you need to know your truck. Um, a lot of truckers like to pull overweight, and some truckers don't due to the wear and tear on their trucks. So mm -hmm. you must know your trucks. Perfect. Another question says, are there any map apps that we could take routes around low bridges or any routes that may be hazardous to a tractor and trailer? Now, I'm going to tell you as a freight broker, and, I'm, I'm, and we are freight brokers in the room, this would be a good question for a carrier asset um, because they're the ones that hold the permit. As a freight broker, we do not hold that permit. We don't order the permits on behalf of the carrier or the driver. That is not something that we personally would do. Um, they hold that. And so on their permit, it will tell them their route. Also, if you most, I'm saying most um, carriers that do heavy haul as part as their, um, that's what they do, like the JF Lomas, the Diamonds, the people that have experience in the industry that really know their stuff, they have in-house permit departments that handle all of that routing. Is that right, Lita? Yes. That, yes. That's what your experience too? As a carrier, I use the tracker pass and uh, I know that you can put the uh, pickup city and delivery and it is showing you the paid roads and uh, it might even show you the bridges. But um, I yeah, agree and that they have in-house uh, in people who are dealing with all these permits. I'm going to drop in the... Um, in the chat, something called oversize.io. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, um, but I've used it over the years, um, especially with our Department of Defense um, customers. I have a customer with the SDDC and I use a lot of RGN and I use oversize.io in order to quote those shipments. And it will tell you the routing. But again, um, as a freight broker, we do not take possession of that freight. And it would be very, very negative for us, especially if you just talked about a claim that you're dealing with. Um, we would not want to get involved in that process. We would not want to put our hands in that process. God forbid something should happen and they hit a bridge, you know, um, it would, you wouldn't want to be in that position, correct? Because it is a responsibility of the driver yeah. that once he gets loaded, he needs to take out his tape measure and, and get on that ladder and, and check to see the real height and the real width of that because he has to make sure that that permit matches what he is current, you know, he's he, the shipment that he's running. Um, and we wouldn't want to be involved in those tedious de details as a freight broker. Is that your um, recommendation to ladies is not to be involved. And also about going over a scale, Jamira, right? When is scaling out, you recommend that to your drivers as well, right? Yeah. So you, you need to know your truck because as the carrier, I don't know what your truck, I don't know if you drive a Freightliner, Peterbilt, I don't know none of that. All I know is you accepted the load and you going to deliver my freight. So I always let the carriers know, hey, if it's overweight, you need an overweight permit. So mm -hmm. therefore, that way, if you do have to go through the scale, you don't have to worry about a fine. You can go through, DOT can come out, inspect you, at, you're at ease because you have your documentation uh, ready to show. Yes, Perfect. But, uh, I will recommend also, uh, I just, uh, with all the respect uh, with dispatchers, I think that, uh, again, I would recommend to talk to the drivers. Even though you book this lot with the dispatcher, I would still advise to talk to the driver because he is the one who knows uh, all of the details, not the uh, dispatchers. Sometimes they just got hired and uh, they still don't have enough experience. Exactly. And even as a, even as somebody um, that's been doing over dimensional for over 15 years, I still rely on that carrier. It's the carrier's responsibility to know what his tractor and trailer can weigh, what his tractor and trailer can handle. 
you know, whether or not he has enough flags or whether or not he has the proper equipment. Um, and again, it says there's power and knowledge. Every broker I have met who does OD freight has a nice tall, tall stack of binders um, with state regulations to know length, width, height, and weight limits in the states they're hauling. Um, yes, because of hours of service. I mean, if you're hauling over dimensional, you know that certain cities have shutdown regulations, right? That you cannot haul like, the, you know, Virginia has in the, in the city of Norfolk, there's a city regulation that at yes. a certain time during the day, you cannot haul um, the, the product, you know, a half an hour before um, sunrise and a half, you know, sunset and a half an hour after sunrise. I mean, so it just, it, it comes, you know, with the territory. And I think I got that mixed up, but um, it comes with the territory. I have a spreadsheet that tells all the states and whether or not I, we can haul um, during the day only, daylight hours only, um, and what regulations and when you need to escort and that kind of thing. But again, if you go on to Amazon, they have a cool book. All you needed to do is search for um, overdimensional shipments and you'll find a whole array of, you know, binders and books and it's a, it's a, it's a pretty penny and it's, it's like tax law. Okay. Let me just tell you, it's not, it's not fun to learn. And again, I would just go back on the relationship with carriers and not a relationship with a carrier that's been in business for three months. Okay. We're talking your relationships with your carriers. They've been in business a while. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So some of my carriers have been in business for 15, 20 years. I mean, I have a guy, um, um, I, I'm not going to give out his name because he only has six trucks and I don't want to share, but he, he's been in business for 25 years, right? So definitely. Um, and one of the questions DeAndre says, are brokers responsible for permits if this question was answered? No, right? No, we are not responsible for permits, but it is always great to do uh, our own research to know how much would these permits cost so we can quote the customer correctly or if the customer is saying hey your quote is very high you have to know uh, the knowledge uh, price for the permits and uh, that you can explain the customer why you are quoting also i noticed that drivers uh, i'm sorry i have to say that but drivers sometimes lie and uh, let's say this permit is 60 dollars they would say it is 250 so it is better go and uh, do your own research because you have to give accurate information to your customer. If you lie to your customer the way drivers lie to you, it is not good. So Google is your friend. Uh, you can always find out uh, how much this permit would be for your own coding purposes to code the customer accurately. And I must One. say, yes, it's good to know how much uh, oversized, uh, overweight permit costs. Me as a broker, I do have overweight permits because I have trucks as my access base on my trucking side. So that's why I have to be knowledgeable because every state overweight permit is different. Florida is different. South Carolina is different. Alabama is different. Georgia is different. So you must be knowledgeable and you also need to know the route that your carrier is taking because every state, it'll be a different charge as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And another way I got away from doing that, Lita, was um, when I first started out is I, and I know it was crazy, but I would say, I'm going to pay you X amount plus permits. And they had to send me a copy of the permits. Um, another thing too, is to always ask your carriers when they're doing oversized shipments, are you going to order the permits after you get loaded? Because permits don't just come in. You just don't order them and they just magically appear. I mean, it takes sometimes, you know, 24, 48, or even 72 hours, um, especially when you're trying to go into like New York City. And that permit can take up to three to five days, depending on the route you have, or even up to a week or two weeks, right? Yeah. Because there are oversized shipments where you have to move lines. I mean, I've never, you know, done that, but... You have to actually move lines and so there's there's a lot that's involved is being able to communicate ask the right questions so again just like port work and i'm going to say this just like we said it on monday there there this is a niche that you just don't just jump into 
unless you have very, very strong stomach, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and you're not scared. I mean, did you jump into it, ladies? Or <laughs> did you did you take a little bit? And I personally can't say I jumped into it. I'm not as brave as some people. Um, I worked for a company that that's what they did. I worked for Buchanan Hauling and Rigging here in Fort Wayne for about three and a half years. And so I got to learn underneath them, right? Um, so I can't really say that I jumped into it. What about you, ladies? Well, I feel I just jumped in there, to be honest with you, because I never had anything to do with these shipments. But uh, I guess uh, because of my experience as a driver and as a dispatcher, it helped me a lot. But um, as far as the permits, I wanted to add uh, that, yes, you are right. This oversized lot, it is not like last minute lot, you know, they cannot just say, hey, I have this oversized lot, just find me a truck. Because this permit, sometimes it takes three days uh, to get. So you have to uh, have time to arrange everything correctly. Correct. And maybe a lot of times some drivers will maybe do a couple you know, maybe five, 10,000 pounds more than what it actually weighs um, on a one-off shipment, or they might do something that's wide, um, right? Yeah. They might add a few inches to it. Um, Bonnie asked the question, says, where can I get that spreadsheet? Not giving it away. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's some things I'm just not going to give away. And then is there a load board for oversized freight? It says Elizabeth. Um, if we're talking from a carrier standpoint, is there a load board that you girls, that you use? I think uh, just the uh, track stop and the uh, DAT are good ones. Mostly track stop, I would say, but I don't know any like specialized freight uh, load board only for oversized. I could tell you when I started in the beginning in 2006 as an agent, I used load boards to build. Um, I also um, Googled, it's Yahoo'd. Not we didn't have Google then. Yahoo over dimensional. And I think even if you, right now, if you if you type into Google over dimensional freight, you can find carriers that do it. Um, but you can also find a lot of brokers. So be careful um, when you're doing that. Um, it's OK. Where can we buy it or did you create it? I created it by reading the um, the book with a friend. Um, I have a girlfriend that um, does permits. That's what she does for her, the company she works for. Um, and so I spent a summer um, creating it with her and I got a copy of it. So that's the answer to the question. Um, another one says, um, if you got, get any names of the apps, please share. Um, I think the apps for, um, if you could ask what apps you're kind of looking at, that would probably help us a little bit more. Um, any comments of anything else you, could, you ladies would like to add when it comes to um, ensuring shipments um, go smoothly? Were you scared the first time, Lita? Uh, yeah, I would just add that uh, you have to realize that uh, the more expensive the equipment is, the more expensive, uh, the, the high, higher will be the cost. So uh, comparing to flatbed and RGN, of course, you have to quote accordingly because if the equipment is expensive, then the drivers will ask for more money. So the same lane, if uh, there are two loads that one can be moved with flatbed and another one with RGN, of course, RGN would be uh, more expensive. Uh, that would be my, um, you know, a, like advice when you are trying to quote. Just keep this in mind that uh, if you need uh, more expensive equipment, the quote needs to be higher. Um, and, Perfect. Yeah. and and how did you learn how to quote shipments when you started out um well you know? i always tell uh if people ask me and uh, it doesn't matter if it is driving if it is reefer or over dimensional or flatbed uh, of course the dat and track stuff they have these rates but i always always recommend that we talk actual carriers at least five carriers mm -hmm. to get accurate code so I average, I check the load boards and see what is this lane. But uh, then uh, I go ahead and call and talk with real carriers and see what they say. Sometimes, of course, uh, drive carriers code might be like different. 
even one thousand, two thousand dollar different. But uh, you kind of already have an idea what what would be reasonable for the carriers because you don't want to underpay the carrier, but at the same time you want to make profit and make the customer happy. So you have to talk to real carriers and to get this code. That's how I, I did it in the beginning. Perfect. So that's on the carrier side. And, 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 and DeAndre asked the question, says, Mama Bear, did they touch on prospecting for oversight shippers? If so, I'll review the video later. We, they did not touch on that. Um, but I want to share with you, when you do the quoting, it's always want to be higher. Most overdimensional um, margin is, you know, 20 to 25% from what I do. Is that something you do? You, do you have a percentage just in case something goes wrong um, that you can that you have a buffer? Well, I I do this with my most of the time. I don't like calculate percentage. I just do it in, in intentional and with using my in, uh, intuition. And I always yes try to cut a high in case something happens. So I have some room to cover this track without big loss. So that's how I do it. And uh, it depends how many lots my customer gave. So I just have a project. I need to find six RGNs. So of course, I am not going to get like 30% or 25%. That's how I do it. Of course, you can get it. But because he's giving me six lots, I will just try to be reasonable. Exactly. And so yeah. he asked you, what is your what is your prospecting technique? How do you find overdimensional shippers? I know the first one you said just kind of fell in your lap. Yes. From there, what, what happened? Did it just snowball? <laughs> so uh, as I found most of my customers through LinkedIn and uh, visiting face to face. So with LinkedIn, I am just searching equipment, far equipment, machinery, um, bulldozers, uh, tractors. Uh, even in, in steel industry, there are a lot of overdimensional shipments. So yeah, I, I just uh, look machinery, different uh, types of machinery, and uh, that's how I find potential customers. But again, I want to mention that uh, until you move lots, you might know that they are doing overdimensional because that is not something that they do all the time. But sometimes once in a while, um, they might do hot shot LTS, but once in a while they will have these projects that I need six RGNs. So it is not something that they do it all the time. Wonderful, wonderful. And so DeAndre asked a question to say, are we able to win bids on the spark market at 20 to 25%? I can tell you from my experience, and maybe this is from your experiences, is that when your customer trusts you, they don't argue about price. Is that right? Is that what you can fair to say? That you really don't have to worry about the competitor? That's correct. So if that just answers your question, DeAndre, in the beginning, yes, it's all going to be about price, right? Because they don't know you. Um, but once you get in the door and they can see that you, you know your stuff, things are different. And with overdimension, let's touch on riggers. Can you touch on riggers, especially in the machinery market, right? There's, there's, there, there's riggers that have to pick, make appointments. You have to make, make sure you arrive at that rigor on time. What happens if you well, do not, if you do not make a rigor appointment? Yes, I can tell a lot of stories about these crane appointments. So <laughs> it is the uh, same like Walmart appointment, guys. So if you are late, this uh, crane, crane guy, he might just leave because uh, every hour they charge, I think, 250 or 350 dollar right per hour so no one of course wants to overpay um, but, exactly. uh, last, to... last summer last winter i'm sorry not last summer but last winter we had an ice storm here in in northern you know northern indiana on the ohio border and i had a customer um that we shipped just 55 60 miles from my house and we were in the midst of a, a, a snowstorm and we couldn't get to that facility. The driver couldn't get there. The cost for that rigor to come out two days later when everything was, you know, just hunky dory cost me $5,500. So it's expensive. It's very, very, very expensive. Um, so one of the questions is, would it be fair to say that most customers who request overweight or overdimensional quotes 
from you will understand the additional time it can take to get accurate numbers and quoting. Does, how long does it take you to quote a shipment? Let's go there. <laughs> I, I think not every customer understands it. Like last time I had this project and um, I told that we need to use a RGN and he was asking me what is the difference between step deck and RGN. So, and he was thinking that I can bring him like four tracks at the, every 30 minutes, uh, like for next day. I told him that you have to give me a, a little bit more time so, yes, there are customers who have been in this uh, for a long time. So they know uh, even sometimes more than you know. But there are, of course, new people that get hired and they are learning. So you have to educate your customer. And I even had some cases that when new people get hired, they call me and ask me, what, what Lida, what is a LTL? Or like, what do you consider LTL? Or what equipment do I need for this one? Sometimes they educate you, sometimes you educate them. So it is just partnership. Wonderful, wonderful. Do you want to add anything to that, Jamira, or are you good? No, that is, that's correct. I concur. Awesome. Um, Julie said, Lita, did you drive OS when you were working as a carrier? I don't no. know what that. Oh, I think oversized, maybe. She... Okay. No, no, I was driving reefer. Yeah. And another question was, Lita, did you drive over dimensional when you were a carrier? How long have you been brokering over dimensional? Uh, I am a freight agent for one and a half years. So I think I started from day, day one, they started to give me an over dimensional, not every day, but like once a week or every two weeks. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so then the last very question is, is there any resources that really helped you in your freight brokering game um, in Overdimensional? Was there anything like that you, you couldn't leave the house without? Well, I guess the Mama Beer, my uh, 20 years uh, of experienced <laughs> driver and Google. So these three, <laughs> you know, resources have awesome. you. Awesome, awesome. What do you think is the key to success? What keeps you going every day and growing the business? Do you think the reason why you made six figures last year um, uh, is, is because of overdimensional? It's not only overdimensional. The key to success is when something happens. It happened even today and it happens almost every day. You get stressed. Uh, you sometimes cry. But then you just say, okay. Uh, tomorrow is a new day and I am starting strong. I am starting with more knowledge and the never give up and being persistent. That's what uh, keeps us all going forward. Awesome. 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 What about you, Jamira? Yes. Yes. <laughs> she knows what I am talking. Yes, right? yes. I'd rather do blood, sweat and tears in my own company than doing it with someone else in another company. Um, it's a lot. I would tell anybody it's a long night. Me and Lydia has been on the phone before trying to figure stuff out. Yeah. Um, first started. And, you know, it's just like, Lydia, I don't know. Let's look this up. Let's let's find it so we can have the right information and the collaboration and being able to call on individuals to help you is also good. As wonderful, wonderful. Well, I really wanted this panel to be about someone not coming in with a lot of industry experience. I tried to make sure that it came from a perspective of, of us knowing that I hear a lot of people out there say that you have to have 15, 20, 30 years in order to make money in this trillion dollar game. And I don't want to downplay what they're saying. However, we're smart individuals, we're smart women, and, and women that have looked at perseverance and looked at our, where we came from, right? Uh, I come from a small town in rural Nebraska where, where the worst thing, the best thing I was going to become is either married at 17 or, you know, a drug addict. I don't know, but look where I've come, correct? And, and I think that when you have this drive inside of you, to want to do something for your children or do something for your family or be different, right? Um, it's the driving force that keeps us awake at night. It keeps us up. 
It makes us, you know, do things we would normally wouldn't do. It takes take risks we normally wouldn't take, right? Um, and so I wanted to come from that perspective. I didn't want to bring on the, our panel, which I could have. I had a few truck drivers DM me and say, hey, I have 30 years of experience or I have 45 years of experience. And what I didn't want to do in this particular panel was to show startups yes. that it's possible to have a dream and it's possible to fulfill your dream, whether it's an agent owner, Jamira is an agent owner. And, and you can see she's, she's yawning. She's like, I'm tapped. Right. And then we have a lead up here. Who's an agent owner. Right. And they're very distinct and different. Um, because I know that Jamira still probably has to go home, upload bill of ladings, make sure the billing gets out. It's almost Friday. Drivers are going to want their money. Right. So there's a lot of challenges where Lita can finish her shipment, deliver it final in her system. And her back office takes care of all that crap, right? So if you could go back to those very beginning days when you first started, there was a mindset change that said, I can do this. When was that? Or what was said in your head that made you say, I'm going to take a step, a step out there in faith? For, for me, it was... I said to myself that I will never clock in on anyone else's clock. Um, after being wow. in the military, you know, after um, doing everything, you know, uh, from working for the government, everything, I stepped out. Um, and after being with, you know, my daughter's father, he was a truck driver. He always said what he wanted to do. So if you come with me with a plan, I'm going to research your plan and I'm going to help you execute it. Oh, so wow. that's what that's what I did. I I wrote down the plan. I wrote down the vision. I prayed over it, and if it was meant, I knew that I was gonna be successful at it because I knew anything that I do, anything that I touch, is what it will always be successful. Um, mm -hmm. with me, I I'm a go getter. I'm a go mm -hmm. out the. I'm gonna do whatever I gotta do to get it. Mm -hmm. Um, I have had some no's. I have had rejection in this business of transportation everything hasn't been peaches and cream um but when it comes to you and you build up your network and your customers trust you and your peers trust you um they start referring you to other individuals and that's how you build what mama bear has taught us your book of business that's right. how you build your book of business and once you have built your book of business everything else will flow you're going to have slow days. You're going to have days where you feel like nothing is happening. But at the end of the day, as a business owner, you always have something to do to improve your business for the better of tomorrow. Wonderful. Before we get to Lita, I just want to just drop your some gems. DeAndre said this is in my Martin voice. You go, girl. Mm -hmm. and, and then thank you, Jamira. I see you in your car. Thank you for dedication to your craft. And... Again, Lita, they were saying so many gems. They're so inspired by your story. But again, what made you just jump out in faith, you know, and yeah. just make it happen? It and you had a struggle. Can I talk about you being a foreign national, not yeah. born in this country, and, and yet you kill, you're killing it out here? Can we, can we really say that? Is that going to be too yeah. much for you? Yeah, she is killing it. Because when we first talked on the phone, I said, Lydia, I need you to slow down for me <laughs> so I can understand. And the more we talk, I start understanding. And she's doing really, really well. And from me to you, Lydia, I salute you. Thanks. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, for me, uh, just uh, being this, you know, immigrant and, of course, when you are an immigrant and you have watched all these Hollywood movies and uh, you have all these dreams about America, that America is a land of opportunity, and um, that's how I came to America, you know, that this is a land of opportunity and I will do everything to get my American dream. And I remember um, I, I didn't, I want to mention this, that while I was doing uh, dispatching, I couldn't find customer because I was not fully doing uh, prospecting. So I want everyone to realize that sometimes it takes five to six months to find this customer. But if you find good customer, it is worth it, even if you have to wait five, six months. 
And I remember that I was just praying to God. I, I just want to make $5,000. And, and uh, after I got my customer, I made uh, almost 11000 in my second month. So when you oh. believe on yourself and you ask, of course, this is not like gospel preaching, but whoever, whoever you believe in, just uh, believe and um, you will get even more than you ask. So, wow. Yeah. And, I, and I don't want to tell you, Jamira, your story because your story is your own and I want you to speak it from your own voice. But I remember the day I was in tears when you called me and you said, Mama Bear, I just got 15 containers. Yes. And, and it, was, it was your first like two weeks as a business owner, right? Your first two weeks as your bond went active. Yes. So... Um, I don't mind sharing it. That was two Thank years you. ago. So um, my bun had just went active and I did call and um, I used to make a hundred and some calls a day, literally calling because I was trying to get some work done. I wanted people to believe me. I wanted people to know that I can move it. And I called one individual and he said, no, baby, I don't need any help, but my partner do. And I called his partner. His partner said, Jameer, I have 35 containers that I need you to move. And I was like, 35? Mama Bear, listen in. I called Mama Bear on three-way. She's here to witness. And I was like, she was like, girl, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know about this. And she gave me a quote to quote. And I said, Mama Bear, I can't quote that. I quoted, I told her what I was going to quote. I don't even remember because it was like double. It was, it was like double what I, I quoted. Yeah. So I quoted him and he agreed to it. Mm -hmm. He said, Jamira, I need all 30 of these five containers moved by the end of the year. And with the help of God and the help of carriers, mm -hmm. we moved all those containers without failure. Everything went smoothly. Thank God to Mama Bear. Once again, she was a lifesaver because my business wasn't structured. I wasn't ready. I was praying for business, but I wasn't ready. I didn't have no BOLs. I didn't have no revenue. I didn't have anything. Rate confirmation. I didn't have rate. I didn't have anything. Um, Mama Bear applied for Axel for me because I needed something. They approved me. They sent me all the container numbers. And we had to get it done. So I think after that, we made over $50,000 or I don't even remember Mama Bear because it was two years ago. Yeah. And ever since then, the Lord, um, I'm like, Lydia, I don't want to make it a platform. You believe in whoever you believe in. But I believe in the Lord. And ever since then, we have been moving constantly. And I, I'm thankful for Mama Bear. I'm thankful for Lydia and my other two counterparts that I was on here with the other night for us being able to call upon each other for assistance. Oh, wow. And I just really appreciate you guys for coming out. You gals, I should say girls for coming out and just sharing this story and just sharing what exactly, you know, we can do with just a little bit of hope, right? A little bit of hope. And one thing I will tell you, and they know this when I don't know something, my hands are off. You know, I, I'm like, I think it might be this. And one of the hardest challenges as a freight broker is, is that when you get a brand new client, the client could be, you could be calling a client in Savannah, Georgia. And he's like, I have a shipment in LA. And yeah. you don't have any idea what the market is doing in LA. And it could go really, really, really wrong. So when a lot of people out here say, I never give back freight, I never go up on the price, I never do anything. Well, I'm telling you, until you get your feet wet, and even a 25-year veteran, I'm 23 years in right now, even myself, I get it wrong. Does that make sense? So what Jamira said, Jamira, I think she took the round trip miles times like five. <laughs> she did something, something I didn't even have the guts to do. And it really inspired me to take a real big challenge because after that happened, I was able to pay off $180,000 worth of debt. When she brought in a new girl coming into my realm and say, hey, I'm going to do this and I don't care what the consequences are. I don't care if I have to drive down the road yeah. halfway out with my leg out the window. So I'm going to get it done. It inspired me, and, and she knows this, right? We talked about this. 
I, I sat here and paid off $180,000 worth of debt in like 13 months. And it was because of you, Jim Mary. You were there inspiring me to push harder to take a customer and say, hey, I deserve more than only making 10%, right? And also, Mom Bear, I learned from you from taking your course that anything, anytime a customer rush you, you take the price up. Yes, I remember this. <laughs> when, when, when they you rush you, the hit the up, five right? or six key on your you, yeah, you, so you, if you're a you rush, take and this I, calculator and you see the five, the six, the seven, the eight, the nine key. So if, if there's 693 miles and what are they going to do? They're going to rush you, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you're going to take that times five. So that would, you know, 698 miles times five is three $3,500. And if they're really rushing, what do you do then? You go up take to six. Up. And yeah. if they're really rushing you, you go up to seven because the more. What, what made me rush it up was it was the holidays. It was Christmas. So I had to make the executive decision that my carriers, they're willing to work on Christmas. So therefore, I need to pay them more because they're away from their families. And you just dropped 35 loads in my lap, which I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I want to do it. And I was up with my carriers while they was moving those containers from Savannah to South Carolina. So it was sleepless nights for me. And cause I wanted to make sure it was done right. Right. So I was riding in the truck. I was doing everything trying to, I see the rush. I wanted to go see the facility that we were delivering to. I wanted to meet the individuals who was up with me receiving the, um, the dredge. So it's, it's very worth it. Amen. Amen. So there was a, a question that she has really quickly, and we have to end up because it's getting late. Um, it says, what is the great software to produce bill of ladies for brokers that do intermodal? It's a PMS software, right? Um, well, believe it or not, for the last two years, I used an Excel spreadsheet <laughs> for, her, for my BOLs. Um, after that, I graduated, and <laughs> I went to um, ITS Dispatch. Um, but for my first year and a half, two years, I just use a um, Excel spreadsheet. Wonderful, wonderful. And so Heather asked really quickly. She said, "How do you find legitimate people that need containers move? Where do you start?" I guess it's covered in the other video. Yes, it's covered from the Monday night video. Um, and then Keisha, do you remember Keisha Withers? She said she started with you, ladies, and congratulations on your success. Um, I know she was in the logistics sales corridor. Um, and she said, did you use a factoring company for your first loads for, um, or do you use your own source of finance? Alita is an agent, so they have deep, deep pockets, right? <laughs> but uh, you use a factoring company, right? Yes. My first loads that I first used, I don't use a factoring company now, but my first loads that I moved as a broker, yes, I used a, fact, um, a factoring company called Axel. And I think it's denim now. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and again, she's self-funded. That's another strategy for another day. Yeah. It's yeah. a strategy for another day. And as a freight broker, that's an owner. Yeah. You've said this a million times. Cash flow is always a problem. It's always a problem. <laughs> exactly. So again, I just want to say everyone, I want to thank you so much for coming out tonight. I love you so much, ladies. Really you know that. I love you so, so much. And there's nothing... If there's anything I could ever do more, um, just let me know. But I, I'm so excited to be a part of your lives. We're gonna be we're gonna be old sitting on a beach someday, right? <laughs> <laughs> Discussing all of this, all right? I Hopefully. Love you. We, we don't we have, have to go to Greece. You said we're gonna go to Greece together, Lita. We don't have to get that. Oh, let's just do it while we are young. Okay? I know, Lydia. I know. <laughs> because I'm getting old in this home office. I need to become young again. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go on. We need to go on all, all us and then Elizabeth and Shaylin. We all just need to take, you know, my significant other would never let me go. So we'll have to bring him along. <laughs> but we should all go on a trip sometime. We will. We'll plan it coming up 20, end of 2023, 2024. Absolutely. Uh, can I Maybe? ask something uh, before we uh, move yes. uh, to the end? I just want to uh, advise everyone, just find your community and uh, 
ask questions and try to be helpful, not only ask questions, but uh, it is uh, great to find the community that you can rely on. And uh, anytime you have questions, you can ask, or if you learn something new, you can share. So don't feel that you are lonely because I remember when I was starting out, I reached out to a couple of people. I, I, I think that they are even watching in LinkedIn <laughs> and they didn't want to help, but I remember them, you know, and they were like every word, uh, it, it cost like, I don't know how much money for them, but uh, you just can be helpful. You just can share your knowledge and you will get it in return. So yes. find this community who will help you and you try to give this back to people who are just starting. And um, and that's um, that's my biggest advice when you are just starting out. Don't be shy and um, try to build this community. Amen. Any last words, Demira? No, um, all I can just tell them is if you want to do it, just do it. Just, just do, just go for it. It might seem you listening to us. You listen to us on Monday night. We didn't just get here overnight. It took long nights. It took prayer. It took execution. Um, you can do it. I never tell you that you can't do it. But what I will tell you is that you have to get up. You have to move. And like Lydia said, ask questions. Reach for help. We have a mentor. Get you a mentor. Get you a mentor, someone that's going to give you the truth, someone that's going to tell you yes, no. I'm not saying you can't, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so get you, get you a mentor. Find someone that you can trust and lean on. Exactly, exactly. Well, everyone, I just really admire both of you ladies, and I'm just so excited to see you guys five, six, seven, eight years. We started together. I started as a coach with you girls, and I can't wait to see where, uh, where you guys are going to go. They're asking for your socials um, on social media. So I, you're on, if you put Jamira, um, wait, Jamira, it's Williams, right? Last name Williams. Um, if you look for her on LinkedIn, she's definitely on LinkedIn. She's also on Facebook. Um, and again, just go out there and, and, and knock it, ladies. You got this, right? 2023 is going to go larger and larger. Thank you so much, Melissa, for inviting us. It was great. They're yeah. asking who your mentor is. Really? <laughs> um, <laughs> you, have a, you have a several of them, right? Lita, you have Dennis Brown, right, as well? Uh, well, uh, Dennis Brown, uh, he helped me uh, a lot, but I would say that... Uh, you helped me uh, more on prospecting side. I mm -hmm. think uh, because being a woman, I consider you to be my mentor. <laughs> uh, as a woman and as a business woman, I consider you to be my mentor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my mentor is Mama Bear. Oh, I just love her. That's all. She did things I would never do. She's my mentor. She's been my mentor since I first started. Um, so I holler and I'm not sure she's taking any more, no, um, not. but she's my mentor. Um, Lydia, just a question for you. If anyone wants to, um, for consult, are you doing consult? Are you teaching at the moment to yes. help individuals how to, you know, do oversized freight, teach them how to move oversized dimensional cargo? Uh, yeah, uh, I have a strategy session. Uh, it is not only about overdimensional because uh, when I was starting out, I noticed that uh, really I need this uh, mentor who will uh, be there for me and uh, I can ask questions and I can work individual because uh, the way I learn more when I, I get this individual approach. So that's why I decided to do a one-on-one coaching. Right, and I can tell you that my girls know how to problem solve. Just yeah. like I didn't know how to do containers, but I did know how to navigate the, how to solve the problem, right? Mm -hmm. And so these ladies, even if you want to do something that's a different niche, they know how to get you there, right? They know how to problem solve and get you there. So definitely look up, Lita. I know that you are doing very soon, right? You're doing some kind, you're doing a 
I am working. Uh, yeah, I have uh, this one-on-one coaching that I am doing it after 5 p.m. And uh, this will. Uh, this is one hour, and we work on uh, cold calling. I provide my email templates, and uh, we work uh, based out of your experience, previous experience. Right. We we map out the plan for you. But uh, me and my partner, we are also working on, on our course, which will be especially designed for freight broker agents. So we are teaching them how to become a freight broker agent. Awesome, awesome. The only thing I'm doing this year is just community. I'm giving back to the community and just bringing you all, you ladies, together. I've never really done this. I've never done a panel like this. I think we did some clubhouse, um, you know, a few times. Yes. But I've never really done anything like this because I'm going to tell you, your business did not look like us dressed up right here, looking beautiful, yes. right? I asked her yesterday that she <laughs> yeah, yeah, she even no, you say it, Lita. What did you tell me in my DM? I because uh, I said, Mama dear, beer, you have to get dressed for this meeting because I have to dress oh, up, oh, right? Like well, looking at us, yeah. So. Oh wow. <laughs> she, made, she made me dress up today. So But I love it. It is so beautiful. Aww. Right? Yeah. Oh, all right, everyone, I'll see you later. I'm going to go and enjoy my dinner. And the next panel is going to be about Mexico and how to ship in and out of Mexico. That's going to be the next panel. I don't know. It's going to be sometime in February. Um, and definitely, um, I'm excited about that. All right, I'll see you later. Thank you so much, Mama. Thank Abby. you. Have a great night, everyone. You too.